and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing okay. Yes, welcome back. If you saw our video last week, you'll know that we're sharing some really fun, easy, budget-friendly ideas that you can do at home this Valentine's Day. And today we're doing a couple's quiz. We have 20 questions that are gonna encourage some new conversation, allow you to have a bit of a check-in on your relationship, and yeah, just have a bit of fun. This will be interesting. The questions sound simple on paper, but I'm sure as we get into it, it'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's try and avoid any arguments. This is Valentine's Day after all. Let's all treat each other with kindness and patience. Absolutely, we're just gonna have some fun. I'm sure this is gonna be a blast. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, we are filming this towards the end of dry Jan. Otherwise, we would love to be doing this with a bottle of wine or some beers and make a date out of it. Yeah, I think that'd be the funner option. We're doing it over coffee, but you know, <laughs> I'm sure we can still have a giggle. So let's kick off with the first question as we got 20 to get through. Okay, go on, you go first. So who said, I love you first? That was me. I'm sure that was me. No, it was me. I text you saying, there's something I've got to tell you, but I don't want to tell you over text. I want to tell you when I, when I see you. This is when we were doing long distance dating. What do you think it was? I'm sure we were laying on the couch in your old bungalow where you used to live. Mm -hmm. And I said to you, I want to say it. And you were like, no, don't say it. And then I said it. And then the next week you text me to say, I've got something to tell you because you didn't say it back to me the first time. What? That's how I remember it. That is absolutely not how it went. <laughs> wow, we're arguing already. It's only question one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was me. I knew when I met you, there's no way I didn't say it. I remember it. I remember being so nervous to say it to you because like it was so early. I think it was only three weeks after we had met. Yeah, I mean, I would have said it to you on the first weekend, I think, but <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that's not what happened. All right, I think we should move on. <laughs> okay. But it was me. <laughs> it, was, it was actually me. Yeah, okay, me, next. Yeah, number two. Question number two, who works out the most? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is an easy one. Yeah, there's there's no argument here. It's it's I. It's me. I work out. <laughs> no, you've actually started this week. I have to work out more. New year, new me, 2024. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I work out maybe five times a year. You work out five times a week. So yeah, it's a it's a big thing for me. It's it's good for my mental health, and I've done it since I was 18. But um, I was quite a large teenager. So it was, it was something I started in my early adulthood. And yeah, I, I love working out. It's part of my morning routine. That's it, it's me. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm the problem, it's me. Oh. <laughs> it's just a song. Oof. Okay, question number three. Who spends the most time on social media? Wow, that's a tough one since we both work on social media. Yeah, I think we, we try to be equal. We spend hours and hours on there because it is our job. It is, yeah, but we do have a cut-off point. I try and have a rule where I don't go on from half seven at night till half seven in the morning. So we get to have one-on-one -on -one time in the evenings and my mornings are for, you know, my morning routine and everything. And that works. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doom scrolling, we're, we're doing it productively. With a purpose. Yes, absolutely. Question number four, who's the biggest baby when sick? Oh God. Well, that's obvious. It's me. Yeah, I mean, when Natalie's sick, I probably hear about it seven million billion times a day. I don't know why, I just need to vocalise everything that I'm feeling. And it would be okay, apart from the fact that she's sick quite a lot of the time. I am, I am, especially in the winter. So I know that's annoying for you, but it's my only time where I'm needy, isn't it? Yeah, like I'm the complete opposite. When I'm sick, I just want to be left alone and I'm rarely sick, like, thankfully. <laughs> that's like, do you need anything? I'm like, just leave me alone, leave me be. All right, question number five. Who is the better cook? <laughs> it's clearly you. 
Oh, you were living on hot noodles and frozen veg when I met you with, with a ton of mayonnaise. That used to be your dinners. Don't forget the frozen hash browns. Oh my God. That was my life. <laughs> there was no nutrition no. going on there at all. I lived on my own from a very young age, so I had to learn to cook. And then when I met you, I think I became more passionate about cooking because it's like a love language for me. You know, cooking for someone with love and connecting over food is such a wholesome thing. I'm a rather good chef. You're really good and I'm just terrible. No, but you've actually this year, Natalie vowed to cook dinner once a week. She's been whipping up some real <laughs> lovely food. I'm trying to get over the fear of the kitchen and uh, once a week I'm, I'm doing it. When we first met and you first moved into the flat, I think I went to work one day and you said, oh, I'll have dinner ready for when you get home. <laughs> and when I got home, the fire alarm was going off. I could hear it from down the street. And um, from then on, it was agreed that Natalie wouldn't cook. I have so many kitchen horror stories, it's ridiculous. And um, my family, anytime we're a get together, there is always a story. Yeah, I think one of my favorites is when you try to cook pasta without water. <laughs> Try to boil the pasta without the water. Yeah, to be fair, I had freshly moved out from home. It doesn't say on the back of the pack to add water. It just says to put it on the hob for <laughs> however long. <laughs> I think maybe they've changed it now. Yes. After too many people have done that. Not. The pasta was black to the pan. Had to bin the pan. Couldn't get it off. And didn't you put a tin of beans in? The microwave. <laughs> the microwave. Right, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> this that, could, that's a whole vlog. That's a whole vlog. <laughs> okay, question number six. Who is the messiest? Hmm. We're both pretty tidy, but I think you're slightly messier. <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know, I have this thing sometimes where I just, I don't know, I just forget and just leave things hanging around. <laughs> and yeah, I know it's one of your pet peeves about me and it's something I don't really like about myself so I feel like I've been more mindful you're really not that bad no I know I'm not <laughs> but you know I think it's good to ask these questions sometimes because sometimes you actually don't even realize it about yeah. yourself and I think we did a reel about it and a lot of people were commenting saying oh Natalie isn't your mom and it really kind of like got to me a little bit so I've consciously tried to be a bit more mindful about it and that's not a bad thing no but we did exaggerate hardcore on that reel to yeah. be fair. You're really not that bad. No, I know. I'm, I know. I'm pretty OCD as well. I'm, partic I'm particular. Oh no. Yeah, but then there's certain things that you'll do that I'm like, you know, leaving bits in the sink after washing yeah. up and I'm like, oh no, I can't stand I know. it. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, so I think a bit of both in yeah. different ways. I agree. Yeah. Okay, question number seven. Who is the most forgetful? Well, that's easy, that's me. My memory is terrible. I've got like a memory of a goldfish. I literally need you to remind me of oh, my, my own life stories. <laughs> It's, it's horrible. And I literally have everything written down. If anyone tells me anything, any little piece of information, a tip, like anything, it's written down. My notes on my phone and my notepad are insane. Yeah, and her alarm goes off. What, yeah, a all dozen time. times a I need day. an alarm to tell me. The, the things that I do on a daily basis, I need an alarm to tell me when to do it because I just forget. It's really <laughs> ridiculous. Anyway. <laughs> Where were we? Yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, question number eight. Who is the most patient? <laughs> Just spat there. <laughs> That would be me. Yeah, I am yeah, not the most patient person in the world. Again, it's a work in progress, and I do know this about myself, but yeah, you are. You've got a patient of a saint. <laughs> you really, really do. Probably because I forget what I'm doing. I'm just <laughs> mindlessly stood there. <laughs> and the thing is, I have to wait for you all of the time. I know. No, your patience has got better since like, we met. Well, thank God, it has to, it had to all. God, the amount of times I'm waiting for you, it's... That's really funny. It true. is, it is very true. <laughs> I think she was sent to test me in many ways. <laughs> okay, anyway, hurry up. <laughs> Okay, question number nine. Who <laughs> snores the loudest? You. I don't snore. No, you don't. I only snore if I'm drunk. Or if you're laying on your front. Or if I'm laying on my front and I can only fall asleep lying on my front. So I know that's annoying for you, but eventually I roll over and then I never snore. But 
out of all three of us, Ronnie is the loudest snorer. Are you joking? He wakes us up in the middle of the night. So true. He snores like an old man. It's unbelievable. So loud. We have to shout him to wake him up. <laughs> and he's in that much of a deep sleep. He wakes up and then he's gone again. And it's like that. Back on. Yeah, we'll have to get that on film because honestly, people can't believe that such a loud noise comes from such a small dog. <laughs> oh, he's the loudest. He's the loudest! He is, he's a little old man, is what he is, aren't you, buddy? Oh. Halfway, number 10, baby! Who is the most needy? <laughs> well, it depends on the mood, I think. It depends on the time of the month for both of us, because you can be. I can be, yeah. I yeah. Know, I suppose it is me, actually. Well, I don't know, is it? I don't know, I suppose I'm needy in the way of needing reassurance quite a lot. And yeah. like words of affirmation is my love language. And if Natalie doesn't tell me a thousand times a day that I'm beautiful, then that's it, I'm ugly and that's, that's it. So, <laughs> no, but in other way, you're more needy for physical affection yeah whereas i'm quite i have to be in the mood for someone to touch me and yeah that's a bit of a clash but we've we've worked through that haven't we yeah we've talked about it you ask before touching most yeah. of the time most of the time that's that's just something we've communicated over the years of being together yeah so yeah i think we're both needy in different ways but not on, not in an unhealthy way no because we're both really independent and we both really love our own space yeah but we, it's just about communicating that. Which we do. Which we do. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Question number 11. Where the hell are we? Who made the first move? <coughs> that would be what? That would be you. You sent the first message mm -hmm. on the dating app that we met on and you also kissed me first. <laughs> In the lift, five minutes after we'd met. It was very hot. I it was very hot. <laughs> Definitely broke the ice. <laughs> But we won't go into that here. If you want to hear about that story, I'll pop the link. Oh, there. There. <laughs> oh my god, I just dribbled out my nose now. Oh my god. It's coming out of every orifice. <laughs> Hopefully not. Oh god. Anyway, number 12. We probably don't even need to say the numbers, we could just say next. Okay, next. Who is the most organised? Ooh. I'd say probably me. <laughs> Would you? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm like, you know, you, you see me with my planner. <laughs> my planner is like my lifeline. It's got a page for every area of my life, all the things I need to do, all the things I need to concentrate on. Yeah, and no, I suppose you do win that one, actually. I mean, you're pretty good at being organized, though. I'm like... organized when it comes to, if we go on a trip, I get, I get all of our, not even a trip, our life admin. I organise that. To be I organise all our insurances. I make sure Ronnie's sorted. I get us all of our, our health appointments. I have our calendar. I put your life on our calendar. Yeah. That, in that way, I guess. But with my own life, <laughs> I'm pretty unorganised. But for our family life, I've got it. <laughs> no, you are. You are organised. I think mine. I think again, we have our areas. You do that sort of stuff. I do like work stuff. I plan yeah. stuff for work. And yeah, you do professionally and stuff like that. We have our strengths and yeah, that's it true. Works. Who is the most stubborn? <laughs> <laughs> Oof, tough one. Mm. Equally. Equally, yeah. But we're working on. We're working on letting go of that in the times that we need to. Yeah. I think at first I was probably definitely the most stubborn. Like I could go for <laughs> days without talking. Yeah. And that was just something that I'd learned from previous relationships. And that's not a healthy way of dealing with things at all. Mm -hmm. So I think now the stubbornness comes from us admitting who is the one that needs to apologize maybe. We, we, we disagree on sometimes who's in the wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of our stubbornness is now. Yeah. But we tend to resolve issues a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah. We know that to give each other a bit of space and to try and sort things out as soon as possible and as amicably as possible. Yes. We don't always achieve that, of course. And it's okay to agree to disagree. <laughs> Which we tend to do a lot of the time. Which we do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sweep that under the carpet. <laughs> on that note, moving on. <laughs> Next. 
who does the grocery shopping, me. I do the grocery shopping because I do the cooking. And if I sent Natalie to the shop with a shopping list, you can guarantee she'll come back with half the list and the opposite of what I've asked for. <laughs> I don't know why, but they just never seem to have what you want in when I go. Yeah, or she'll get the budget version, like the lowest end version of what I want. And it's just, it's just not good enough. Yeah, well, you gotta try these things. Yeah. It just causes too many arguments, so yeah, I do it. <laughs> and when you're not the most patient person in the world and you live on an island where there's only one supermarket and where everyone knows each other and the aisles are about this thin and people want to sit and have a lovely conversation about all the dramas that's going on on the island and you have to try and get past them. Yeah, it's, a, it's the highlight of my week, it really is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I actually went to Tesco's yesterday and I had my music on, I had my earphones in, which I've never done before, and it was brilliant. I was just in my own world. Yeah, I'm it was sure great. That. You should try it. I'm sure it was great for you. I bet it wasn't for the people around you. <laughs> Why? But if anyone needs you to excuse me or get past or... I wasn't. I had a basket. Even just one, one ear in. It'll take you out of that world and put you in your own. Yeah, but then how am I going to hear all the gossip? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> right, moving on. <laughs> Who is the most competitive? 100% you, baby. I think that was one of your, the first things your mum said to me. She was like, God, Charlotte, you are competitive. <laughs> well, I'm in it to win it, Louise. I'm in it to win it, okay? This isn't about fun. This is about winning. No, I'm an ambitious person. What can I say? No, yeah, you are. It's good. It's not a bad thing, but um, you've, you've got better at at not being a sore loser and that's the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be a sore loser, I'm afraid you just can't. No, the, that, that's not cool. That's not cool and, <laughs> and I can be, I can be. Not but anymore, again, not anymore, I really don't think. Sometimes, I mean, I want to be on top, always. What can I say? <laughs> Another work in progress. <laughs> Stop it, you're making yourself sound... A leaky tap. <laughs> That's what my therapist says. Charlotte, you're not a leaky tap. You don't <laughs> need fixing. <laughs> Why did she? I like that. I know, it's good. <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, stop putting yourself down. All right. All right, next. Who is the funniest? You're funny, but I think I'm funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were both going to say that. Yeah. No, I think you are funnier. No, I think we're both funny. I'm funny in a dumb way. No. You're telling me not to put myself down and then you're calling yourself <laughs> no, dumb. No, it, it's just true, right? You have Natalieisms, is what I like to call it. Yeah. Where you say random stuff that doesn't make sense <laughs> or you say things backwards, but it doesn't make you dumb. And you are funny. I think I'm funny, like, in a sarcastic way. I'm a bit... Yeah. I've got sarcasm. I'm a bit... <clears throat> I'm quick. You're quick, yes. And witty. But most of my jokes don't hit Natalie. No. So I then have to explain them, which obviously makes them unfunny. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like a sharp and laugh. <laughs> God, I need my glasses. Can we zoom in? Who is the best at directions? Well, that's 100% you. Is it? Well, it isn't me. I get lost even with Google Maps. Well, yeah, I mean, but who who needs to know directions these days with Google Maps? I mean, that's the terrible thing, isn't it? I think I only would know my way anywhere with maps unless it's, unless it's my ends, you know, back in the ends where I grew up. Yeah, but if someone said to you, all oh, right, to get there, you've got to take a left there, go right, walk two blocks and then go left again, you'd probably remember that. I wouldn't remember that. Okay, yeah, if someone was giving me directions. Well, I don't know. This, the, the question isn't clear, to be fair. Who is the <coughs> best at directions? I'd say Google is the best at directions. <laughs> okay. Who changes the light bulbs? Well, obviously, it's Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I am the Bob the Builder in the relationship. I know, you are the DIY queen, mm -hmm. as I say. I, yeah, I've never really been into that kind of thing and that surprises a lot of people, but <laughs> yeah, you love all that. So I'm like, crack on, gal. Go on, get up there. <laughs> yeah, when we did our van build, you, you were the mastermind behind it. I just got told what to do, which Natalie loved and I hated. <laughs> But together we make a good team. We do. <laughs> Who is the most high maintenance? <laughs> that would be more. Yes, absolutely. Very high maintenance. I don't know really what else to say. I mean... <laughs> you were 
a lot more when I met you. Things had to be a certain brand, things had to be from a certain shop, like everything was validated by the cost of things and now because I was a budget person I lived off of all the budget brands so we compromised, we've always compromised throughout our relationship and now you're like oh yeah it's not really about the labels and you're yeah. not as high maintenance. No I always used to have this view that oh saving a few quid here and there doesn't make a huge difference and then when I met you you told me how much you'd saved in your life and I was like oh my god and I had barely anything even though I had a really well paid job and that really was the starting point for me of trying to cut back and seeing what was possible if you just saved and now i think we both live very basic yeah we're minimalists i think now. yeah and i think traveling has taught us that yeah living in a van i'll teach you that <laughs> yeah so i think the only thing you're high maintenance now about is probably your like hair products and your yeah my appearance your appearance yeah yeah i think that's uh, an insecurity thing but also i think it's okay to to splurge on one area of your life yeah, if you cut back course. in other areas. There's nothing wrong with being high maintenance. Oh no, of course there isn't. There's nothing wrong with being any way. You are who you are. Yeah. But I think I was only high maintenance because that was sort of how I was conditioned. Actually, I've realised that I'm actually quite happy living on a budget. Yeah. That it's not about what things cost for me now. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Get, getting older and it's just about discovering who it is that you want to be. Yeah. Not who it is that you've been conditioned to be all your life. Like, decide and be that person. Yeah. Agreed. Wow, that went quick. It did. Final question. Who is the most romantic? I think we battle that title. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I think from the beginning, we've always yet yeah, inspired each other to try harder. And yeah. then we go through periods where we won't do anything romantic for each other. And yeah. then, but we're quick at sort of noticing when things, have, we've let things slip in that area. And I think we make a conscious effort now to do something for each other weekly, don't we? Even if it's just, you know, buying flowers or, you know, writing cute love notes, it really doesn't have to be anything extravagant just, just offering to do breakfast or like it doesn't have to cost anything just being thoughtful yeah and opening up to like intimacy by you know massages cuddles playing with your hair you know and like recognizing each other's love languages and showing love in the way that your partner feels loved if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, because we are all different. We all have different needs. And just on that, I just want to say that it's not always like that. I think relationships are like seasons of the year and our bodies naturally go through changes. Yeah. And but it's also about being mindful. Exactly. That's the thing. I think mindfulness is the most important one and, and communicating and rather than hiding away when things aren't great, talk about it. I think just recognising it together and committing to getting through those hard parts is half the battle rather than just pretending everything's okay when it's not. But I think we should just round it off now because we've covered quite a lot. Yeah, we have. That was so fun though. I think we should do more with a drink next time. Yeah. And have some juicy questions. So if you liked this, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps us to reach the right audience. And let us know in the comments if any of these answers surprised you. And thank you for all of the love on our recent videos. We are going to be doing a giveaway on Instagram as a thank you for supporting us. Yep. So make sure you're following us there and we will see you in the next one. Yes, we will. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye.